Welcome to the Inbound Logistics video podcast series presented by Inbound Logistics Magazine. Today, we're looking into the trends, benefits, and challenges that come with autonomous solutions in logistics. With us today is David Griffin, Chief Sales Officer for Seagrid, and here's our host, Amy Roach. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, David. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Amy. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, before we jump into all of the cool stuff that we're going to talk about on the autonomous uh, side, just take a minute and introduce yourself. Um, tell us a little bit about Seagrid and your role there at the company. Sure. Yeah, my name is David Griffin. I'm the chief sales officer of Seagrid. I'm responsible for essentially all things sales and marketing. So a lot of our customer facing activity. Seagrid is rare in the AMR space. We were a company that was founded more than 20 years ago. And so we uh, were founded on the concept of a really innovative at the time uh, navigation solution based on stereoscopic vision. And importantly, that innovation allowed Seagrid to start to develop what I'll call the first truly AMR solutions in which we could navigate facility-wide without any infrastructure. So if you recall back at that time, the AGBs of the day required things like magnets or wires or reflectors to guide themselves around the facility. With this new stereoscopic navigation innovation that Seagrid brought to market, we were able to do our navigation infrastructure free, which allowed for much simpler and more flexible deployments. And from there, we've kept going ever since. Got it. 20 years, a lot has happened. A lot has changed um, in the AMR market. Let's just talk a little bit about the market in general. I understand that it's predicted to grow to $3.5 billion by 2027. Uh, and I know Seagrid just closed a big funding round to um, accelerate deployment of your autonomous lift truck solutions. So just give us some insight. What is driving all of this interest in AMR solutions right now? Yeah, sure. So I think that the two biggest drivers of the increase in AMR adoption are the cost of labor and the availability of labor. And so in this inflationary world that we now live in, obviously labor is becoming you know, increasingly more expensive over time. Uh, and labor availability is, has been quite a big challenge. You know, we're hearing from many of our customers in the market that on any given day, you know, there might be 10 or 20% of the labor that's simply not available to, to work the facility on that given day. So AMRs allow you to uh, combat both of those challenges, both from a cost standpoint, as well as a, a guaranteed uptime and availability standpoint. And I think we're seeing that for more and more companies are recognizing that this is a very, you know, a very good way to solve those challenges. You know, on top of that, I would point to uh, a safety benefit as well. You know, it's been proven uh, for quite some time now that these automated solutions are far safer than manual driving of equipment inside these facilities. And so customers that adopt the MR see a tremendous safety benefit as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We hear a lot from our audience uh, on both of those factors, the labor challenges and, you know, the need for safety. So uh, totally get that. Um, break down a little bit for us the various types of AMRs that are gaining traction. Obviously, we talk a little bit about the lift trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other solutions as well. You know, what's out there right now? Sure. There's a wide variety of form factors out there now. You've got uh, companies tend to specialize in certain areas. And so on the what I'll call the small form factor side to support, you know, each picking for individual orders. As you kind of move move up the size profile, you have uh, you know larger units that can handle multiple orders at a time uh, from order pickers. Then, as you start to get up into more case size and pallet size loads, uh, there are players out there that specialize in uh, what I'll call pallet size movements in the range of hundreds of pounds. Mm -hmm. Where a company like Secret Place is in pallet size movements uh, into the thousands of pounds, right? And so that is in the form of tow tractors, lift trucks, you know, and even within the lift truck market you've got a variety of different form factors there you've got you know low reach uh lift trucks you've got high reach lift trucks with varying various payload capacities as well so lots of different choices out there for customers that are interested in amrs yeah absolutely and what would you say like is the penetration level for amr solutions uh to date are there a lot of companies that are already using these kinds of solutions or are we really you know just kind of at the very early stages uh, of adoption for amr yeah, I think overall we're at the very, very early stages of adoption um, across the market. I think in some in some areas have a bit deeper penetration. So I think we've seen you know lots of growth over the last several years in what I'll call the each picking order fulfillment market. Yeah, I think as we get into the bigger uh, payloads and the heavier transports, I think those are a bit earlier days. Um, 
Mm -hmm. And so, you know, where we're starting to see uh, the, the growth uh, in the market, I believe, comes from two areas. One is more companies deciding it's the time to get into AMRs, as well as some of those that are farther along in their autom automation journey are starting to scale um, in quantities in the dozens and hundreds and potentially even thousands. Got it. Yeah. The scaling, I imagine, is a big factor. Like you mentioned before about the labor yeah. and the safety, it's hard to scale if you don't have that labor. So that's right. That's that right. A lot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. And, scale, and scaling inside of any one given customer uh, is as much about their internal adoption and their internal operating processes as much as it is about the technology. So it takes, you know, it takes some time and experience for the customers to get comfortable um, deploying this automation. And then, and then once they do that, you can see them start to really scale in a big way. Yeah. Okay. And are there any particular verticals? Obviously these are, you know, we're talking about a warehouse or a distribution center, but any uh, types of products or types of things you'd be moving that are particularly well suited for AMR or on the converse, you know, not suited for AMR solutions. Yeah. I think on the, on the heavier payload side, uh, manufacturing is clearly a strong market for this type of technology. Um, mm -hmm. One, it satisfies the if you think about the cost within many manufacturing environments, it's very, it can be very high cost labor. Uh, and also within manufacturing, you have what I call the steady drum beat of the manufacturing line. So the pacing is very well known and it's very steady over time, which is perfect for, for automation. Mm -hmm. you know, some of the smaller format uh, AMRs are having a lot of success with e-commerce and, and warehousing. Okay. Um, but for the bigger payloads, I think manufacturing is certainly the strength of the market right now. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Let's segue a little bit and talk about benefits. I'm sure uh, there's a long list you'd want to go through. Uh, what are some of the benefits of deploying AMR solutions you know, that companies are seeing so far? Sure. I'd start with the financial benefit. And so in these cases where you know, labor cost and availability is a problem, AMRs offer a very attractive you know, financial return for the investment. And so that I put that first, second, I would put as safety is a tremendous benefit, which has not only... Uh, positive human impact to the safety angle. And it also has a big financial impact uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And then further to automate, companies have to become more consistent and standard with their processes. And so I think AMRs kind of uh, remove some of the processing variability that customers, our customers often deal with um, when it's handled completely in an un unautomated fashion, right? Mm -hmm. So they just they see process improvements through automation, you know, unrelated to the technology itself. Understood. I'm curious on the cost side, um, you know, there is ROI there, as you're saying, there I'm sure is a large upfront, you know, capital expenditure mm -hmm. that people have to companies have to evaluate when they decide if they're going to mm -hmm. go this route. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, what are some of the uh, upfront costs and how are companies making the decision that, you know, they'll get the right payoff in the long term? Sure. Yeah, it's. Um, you know, you look at several factors. So let's take a manufacturing example. Um, you look at certainly the cost of the labor. You look at how many, uh, you know, how many resources can be redirected uh, into other activities. Mm -hmm. You look at how many shifts are in operation. So it's much easier to drive a positive financial return on an investment when you have a two and three shift operation, right? And so Sure. You know, many manufacturers have these multi-shift uh, operations, either much or all of the week, right? Those are typically very successful uh, in terms of their, you know, financial return. And, uh, you know, I think that's that's really what the companies look at. You know, how, how many resources can be re redirected and then how much can I take advantage of the technology across the multiple shifts? Right. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, what about on the flip side, roadblocks? You know, if you're a company and you're interested in adding this autonomous tech to your operations, do you have to worry about integration, you know, with existing technologies, new processes, training? You know, what are some of those challenges? Yeah, it's, it's certainly an adoption challenge. So I, I would say the the challenge of adoption by the by the facility personnel, you know, they've been doing certain, certain things certain ways for often a long, long time. So just the fundamental change in process and a willingness to, you know, understand and adopt that new process, I would point to, you know, as challenge number one. Mm -hmm. I think the other challenges around integrations are, are things that can be solved with time and effort, right? So fundamentally, a company that is interested in deploying AMR technology, things like integrations will not get in the way. Mm -hmm. 
I see what you mean. Okay. And is, is this something that's available and, you know, makes sense for smaller operations as well? Or, you know, is there like a threshold in terms of what size of a company can, you know, can um, spend to deploy an AMR and, and see some of those benefits? You know, you know, the benefits, the benefits are really unrelated to the size of the company. They're tied very closely to, you know, the size of the facility and then the, the financial metrics of that facility. So even, you know, a, a one facility company that has a high, you know, labor cost structure um, that requires lots of automatable movement inside the facility, it can be a great customer for an AMR solution. Understood. Okay. Uh, what about forward looking? Take us through some of the trends that you're seeing, you know, both right now and in the long term uh, uh, overall in the AMR market. Sure. What one trend that we've really noticed over the last couple of years is more and more companies are building what they call automation teams uh, that's specializing and taking, you know, AMR and other similar automation equipment into each of these facilities, and so. You know, as I mentioned, the adoption challenge is real for these customers. And so by building a dedicated team to automation, they're able to build internally their own sets of skills and experiences to help with that adoption challenge. And we're seeing that in almost all of our customers, certainly all of our large customers nowadays are forming these automation teams. In some cases, these teams are dozens of people large. Mm -hmm. And is that like a cross a cross functional team who, who would be on such a team? It's generally a, a cross-functional team of people related to IT. So they would handle things like uh, you know, integrating into the networks, integrating into other systems, operations personnel that understand really what happens inside the facility and can help design you know, the applications and use cases for the automation so that they can be taken um, you know, care of most effectively. And then there's support personnel, right? The, the really tasked with understanding the equipment, understanding how to maintain and support the equipment to keep keep it up and running 24 seven as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So if you are a company listening to this and you're interested, uh, you know, you're exploring a, an AMR solution or you're interested, what's sort of a first step? What, what is the advice that you give to companies who um, are investigating this and, you know, aren't sure which way to go? Yeah, I'd say go do your research. There's lots of information available out there in, in many different forms. I would encourage, Every company that talk to multiple providers, multiple providers and get a feel for, you know, what's possible. And then, uh, you know, certainly as companies are getting started, one of the things that we recommend to our customers quite strongly is start with a win. Like pick, pick a simple, straightforward process that can be automated quite easily and build from there. Right. Don't try to don't try to tackle your hardest challenges first. Right. Right. Okay. That makes sense. I think that's good advice across all of these kinds of uh, supply chain solutions that companies are thinking about. So makes sense. Okay, great. Um, right. Anything else that, that we should know about the AMR market now looking forward? Uh, anything else you know to share? Um, I just encourage everyone to come out and, uh, and take a look at these types of solutions. We're seeing some really big scale develop from you know our customer base and other vendors customer bases the benefits are very real the benefits are very attainable uh, and the improvements to the business will be lasting so i encourage everybody to take a hard look at it great very cool stuff all right again thank you so much for coming and sharing your insights and uh, appreciate it thank you amy thank you for having me Thank you to David Griffin and to Sigrid, and thank you for watching this Inbound Logistics video podcast. For more episodes, go to www.inboundlogistics.com.